So I think we pretty urgently need to talk about tomorrow's CPI report and what effect this could have on our markets as well as Tesla stock. As we've seen today, today was not the prettiest of days for the NASDAQ as well as Tesla and things could potentially only get worse tomorrow. Now, there is some economic data that came out today that a lot of people missed and this just follows the last couple of days a very negative global economic data so we're gonna get into my actual predictions for cpi and what i think this will do for the markets as well as tesla stock hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like these kind of videos in hopes that you will make more money if you follow them and stay up to date with up-to-date information Let's go ahead and get into it. I briefly want to run through some of the economic data that has been coming out recently and some of the actions taken by Moody's that have negatively affected our market so far because I think that's important to understand heading into tomorrow. So what we've seen on August 7th was that Germany is about to go into a, another recession. Industrial production in Germany, which is Europe's biggest economy, fell 1.5% in June. This was a much larger drop than economists were forecasting. This is bad news for the Europe region. But China has really been the problem child. Exports and imports have fallen the most last month that you have seen since pre-COVID, but it's sequentially falling. That's the big problem. Back in 2019, when you've seen the largest drop so far, that was negative 20.65% back here in February of 2019. The next month, your exports were up 14% in March of 2019. Well, what you're seeing right now is exports fell in May 7.5%. Exports fell in June 12.4%. Exports then fell in July 14.5%. It's just sequentially getting worse and worse same thing for imports it's getting worse and worse this is showing a very negative trend to the chinese economic data china is the second most important country as far as global gdp and we do a lot of business with china so if china does bad it likely means a lot of our biggest companies companies like an apple are gonna also do poorly the bad news that hit the markets today was the fact that the chinese economy falls into deflation as the covid recovery is stumbling now the consumer price index fell 0.3 percent year on year in july according to official statistics released on wednesday after registering no change a month earlier, the producer price index, a gauge of prices of goods as they leave factory gates, was down 4.4% in July. Now, this is China. These numbers often are not correct. But if China's reporting deflation, their actual numbers, the real deflation numbers could be a lot worse. Now, deflation sounds good to a lot of people as we have been struggling with inflation, but deflation is actually worse than inflation. Economists fear deflation because falling prices lead to lower consumer spending, which is a major component of economic growth. Companies respond to falling prices by slowing down their production, which leads to layoffs and salary reductions. If you just look at the Japanese stock market, well, the Japanese stock market technically peaked out in the 90s, but what have they seen over the years? Massive deflation right they really haven't seen inflation like at all so that's been a big problem for japan japan stock market peaked on october 1st of 1989 it still has not recovered to the highest point it has been at yet and it just it was bad for a long time japan seen deflation for a very long time and now the markets are starting to recover as japan is starting to see a little bit of inflation but deflation causes very bad things for markets right and this is the kind of bigger uh viewpoint of this 
uh, pretty rough, right? If if you go back, if you were investing in the 60s, you're doing well today still. But if you bought in the, you know, late 80s, you're not doing so good even today. And that was over 40 years ago. That's why deflation is so negative. So that is a big thing that is affecting the markets today. But what you have seen recently is Moody's has downgraded US banks and warns of possible cuts to others. Moody's did not just downgrade your small banks, they downgraded large banks and also put out a negative watch essentially negative outlook for 11 major lenders including capital one citizens financial and fifth third bank corp these are companies over 50 billion dollars of market cap these are not small banks so moody's thinks this situation is going to get worse for banks and sizable unrealized losses that are not reflected in the regulatory capital ratios are vulnerable to a loss of confidence in the in the current high rate environment Moody's is saying, one, you have a lot of unrealized losses on your balance sheet that due to accounting tricks that banks have are shown as not being unrealized losses potentially, but also the loss of confidence. You could see a bank run in some of these institutions is what Moody's is essentially saying. Anytime you're getting credit agencies warning of bank runs, that's not going to be a good thing. On top of that, like I have previously said, credit card debt has now topped $1 trillion for the first time as student loan repayments come due on September 1st. Interest starts accruing again, and then the first payment is due in October. This average payment is around $250 a month. If there is anything that you could say is negative for the economy that would push us into a recession here domestically in the U.S., it's the student loan repayments simple as that and that could be negative obviously for the broader markets as well as tesla stock now the cpi report coming tomorrow will be massively important for a couple of reasons number one the markets right now are expecting the fed to pause with an 85 percent probability we're not expecting another rate hike there's a 15 percent chance we do get another rate hike if this cpi report comes in hot and worse than expectations, well, this 15% number is going to grow. Maybe it's going to go to 30%, 40%, 50%. And uh, you could rapidly start to price in another rate hike. In light of all of the other global economic data we have been getting recently, another rate hike, not what the markets want to hear. But even besides that, you don't have a lot of economic data next week as well. Very small data points this is the largest piece of economic data we're going to get for about the next 10 to 14 trading days so this is likely to fuel a kind of continued directional move if cpi is negative tomorrow markets are going to fall now my expectations are slightly hotter inflation but not anything too crazy right so I've, I've said this in multiple videos, but your month over month readings, as well as your core reading year over year are not expected to change from last month's numbers. You're expecting 0.2% for core inflation rate month over month. You're expecting inflation rate month over month, your headline number to come in at 0.2%, your core inflation rate year over year to come in at 4.8%, and your inflation rate year over year. This is the one that is expected to move. You're expecting that at 3.3% from last month's rating at 3%. Now, I think on one hand, the fact that we're not expecting any of these other numbers to move from last month sets you up for a potential problem. Because hey, what if they do go higher? What if any of your month over month readings come in at 0.3% or 0.4%? That would not be good. So I think there's a greater chance that these numbers could come in at 0.3% rather than beating expectations and coming in at 0.1%. So there's a chance we come in line with expectations and the month over month readings are the same as they were last month, as well as the uh, headline inflation rate 
year over year could come in at 4.8%, the same as last month. That's a possibility, but I think there's a greater likelihood that maybe these come in at 0.3%, maybe a little bit hotter than expectations. Now, your year over year inflation number, that's going to be the important one. Again, last month's reading was 3%. Markets loved that. And this is really the number that hits the main headlines, that gets the algorithms um, to either sell stocks off or buy stocks. Now, I personally think your year over year number is going to come in at 3.4%. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Anything over 3.5% or higher, you're going to be in for a major problem. That's going to be a 2% down move in my personal opinion. Now, anything 3.1% or lower likely to give you a 2% up move. So if I expect 3.4%, that could likely mean a half percent to 1% down move. That's what I would estimate. But again, if you come in at 3.4% on your headline year over year, but maybe your inflation rate, your your uh, not core, your headline month over month comes in at 0.3 and your core inflation rate month over month comes in at 0.3 as well, say a little bit higher than expectations, that could push it, uh, you know, to 1% or worse as far as a potential uh, sell-off in the market. So I think on a risk-to-reward basis, there's a greater likelihood that markets fall coming tomorrow on this inflation report rather than rise. Now, obviously, we've been right before. We've been wrong. Anything can happen. I'm not a financial advisor. I certainly don't have a crystal ball. But what you have seen in the markets the last couple of days is the start of what a lot of people think is a correction, right? The, the NASDAQ is down about 5% from the highs that we seen about two weeks ago. So, I mean, if you have a bad CPI report, that could just continue this same downward, this downward move. And it's, it's very possible, based on where we are now with the NASDAQ, that if tomorrow you did fall 1%, that would put the NASDAQ at about 365. If you fell about 2%, that would put the NASDAQ at about 362. Now, if you guys want to come hedge out your portfolios with us and come trade with us live in real time every time I make a trade on Tesla or any other stock option or crypto, right now we are hedging out our portfolios in the, in the goal, the hope anyway, to make money on those hedges and put that money back into Tesla. Link down below in the description if you want to be a part of it. Now, specifically for Tesla, if the NASDAQ, for an example, dropped 1% tomorrow, I would expect Tesla to fall anywhere between 2 and 3%. Now, from our current price right now uh, and what we're seeing today, a 2% drop for Tesla would put you somewhere around 240, uh, maybe as, as low as 239. Now, a 2% drop or a, a 3% drop would put Tesla somewhere in that range of about 237 to 236. And that is also a possibility. But if the inflation report just comes in really bad, anything over 3.5%, it's possible Tesla could fall 5% or more. A 5% drop would be uh, Tesla stock at roughly about 230. Now, if CPI came out that bad and Tesla fell, you know, 5%, that likely means the NASDAQ's down about 2.5%, and that would put the NASDAQ around that 360 level. So it'd be a pretty rough day in the markets. Which I also should point out when we're talking about the month-over-month -month headline inflation numbers, you have seen the price of gas start to go higher as well, and I don't think the markets are accurately pricing in what that could do for your month-over-month -month number. So I think that's another reason why some of your month-over-month -month numbers could come in a little bit higher than your 0.2% expectation. All in all, I think there's probably a 60% chance that inflation comes in a little bit hotter than expectations. And the markets, again, sell off half percent, one percent, somewhere in that range. I think there's probably a 20 percent chance inflation comes in way higher than expectations. And I think there's probably another 20 percent chance inflation comes in really unchanged from last month at 
like 3% on your year, on your year over year and the other numbers stay the same. That would be your best case scenario. I think there's probably a 20% chance that that ultimately happens and in that case the markets would go up uh probably 2 to 3% honestly just depending on what this year over year number did come in as. So tomorrow is going to be an absolute shit show. I hope you guys are ready for it. Let me know down below in the comment section what you think about CPI coming out tomorrow. What are your guesses? Throw them down below in the comment section. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I mean it, and I will see you in the next one.